red bells. Stand by all stations. Attention, all districts. A five alarm fire. Five bells move in immediately. That's it. Let's roll. Let's go. Fire fighters. <laughs> Presenting Firefighters, the true-to-life story of our unsung heroes who stand ready to ride by day or night against our most murderous enemy, the Demon of Fire. In just a minute, we're going to meet Chief Cody and Tim Collins, rookie firemen, at Northside School in the corridor outside the hall where a riotous meeting of the Firefighters Brigade is in progress. But before we listen in... Here is something else you ought to hear. Let's go, firefighters. Let's go to Northside School, where a conflict between Jimmy Collins and Whitey Williams threatens to wreck the Northside Firefighters Brigade. As you remember, a noisy meeting is in progress. And just a moment ago, the two visitors, Chief Cody and Tim Collins, rookie fireman, slipped out into the corridor to compare notes. Whew, Collins. I've seen some uproarious meetings, but those kids go at it hammer and tongs. Oh, yes, sir. For a moment, I was afraid Jimmy and Whitey Williams would start throwing uh, punches. Well, now we know what the trouble is. Whitey and your brother Jimmy just can't get along. And because they pull in different directions, they'll tear the brigade in two. They're so different, those two kids, that they'll never agree on anything. Your left hand is different from your right hand, isn't it? Huh? Why, sure, but... Yet they get along. They work together. Why, oh, oh, sure, I'd hate to spare either one of them. Right. And the brigade needs both those boys, Collins. Well, you don't think they could ever work together. You don't believe it? All right, Collins, watch me prove it. Let's go back into that meeting. All right, but open the door carefully, Chief. There might be an explosion. Don't think I don't know it. All right, here we go. Oh, good grief. They're at it worse than ever, Chief Cody. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I want to talk. Order, meeting come to order. Whitey Williams, you sit down. Mr. Chairman, give me the floor. Quiet, quiet, or I'll adjourn. Be ready to back me up, Colin. Anything you say, Chief Cody. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Order, our distinguished visitor wants to talk. Mr. Chairman, if I may be permitted... Uh... Oh, golly, well, that's better. Mr. Chairman, have I the floor? You bet. I mean, yes, Chief Cody. And look, everybody, the chief is an honorary member, don't forget. So it's just like one of us regular members talking. Mr. Chairman, everybody knows that. That was the first resolution we passed when we... Whitey started... Williams, you pipe down. You've been talking all day, objecting to this and objecting to that. And I've heard about all... Well, I... Mr. Chairman, as I have the floor and as our time is growing short... I ask the indulgence of the members of the Northside Firefighters Brigade. Why, uh, yeah, Chief Cody. Go ahead and indulge. Uh, indulge what? Well, Mr. Chairman, I come to you with a problem. Oh, a problem, Chief Cody? You want us to help with a problem? Gee. A problem which I may say has caused some concern to the city fire department. Am I right, Collins? Uh, yes, sir. Have you any idea what I'm talking about, Collins? Uh, not the slightest. Hmm. Point of personal privilege or point of order or something. Oh, sit down. You better recognize me. Point of privilege. We'll make it fast. Now what? Uh, over here, we can't hear what the chief is saying. I ask Mr. Williams' pardon, Mr. Chairman. I was addressing a question to my colleague, Mr. Timothy Collins. The purpose of my question, I may say, was to ask Mr. Collins to take the witness stand. Huh? Are we going to have a trial? I mean to tell this meeting the circumstances of the problem which has uh, baffled the fire department. Mr. Collins? Uh, hey, Chief, I don't know what you're driving at. You will in a minute. Now, just get up. Hold their attention so they won't get to fighting. Again. Yes, sir. Uh, at your services, Chief Cody. Members, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Private Collins. Now then, Private, will you kindly relate the mysterious occurrence in the metal shop at 10 Patterson Street on Friday morning of the week just past. Oh, 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 so that's it. That's it. The sprinkler system that fooled us all. Oh, well, now that I know what I'm talking about... Kindly proceed, Private Collins. Well, boys and girls, uh, I mean, Mr. Chairman and fellow firefighters, as you know, I have the honor to be attached to a certain engine company in the city fire department. Oh, sure, Tim. 
Engine 209. Everybody knows that. Order. My gosh, why can't you let anybody else talk? What? Oh, go on, Tim. I mean, uh, Mr. Collins. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now, last Friday morning, at exactly 10.43 in the morning, as we were finishing committee work, an alarm was tapped in from a private box at 10 Patterson. Uh, Chief Cody, maybe you'll tell what happened next. Uh, all right, Private. Well, the call was from the Lee Building in the Manufacturing District, a building with a number of machine shops and other small industries on every floor. I rolled myself when that alarm came in. And when I got there, I met Collins coming out of the door of the building. Uh, it's a dry run, Chief. No fire? No, sir, not a sign. Lieutenant Greenspan has ordered all companies back to quarters, all but the salvage crew. What happened, Collins? False alarm? No, sir, one of the sprinkler heads let go. Let go? Yes, sir. Well, what do you mean? Well, Chief, up there on the second floor, up in the Mammoth Metal Works, there's a line of sprinklers hung from the ceiling in case of fire at one of the machines. Yeah. And suddenly, without warning, one of the sprinkler heads began to spray water. Even though there was no fire, not any more heat than usual from the machines, no reason at all. Well, that sprinkler head must have something wrong with it. Well, I've just put in a new one, Chief. Here's the old one. Well, let me have it. I'll turn it over to the department laboratory for examination. Yes, sir. Here it is, sir. We've uh, shut off the water to the sprinkler system. Well, then turn it on again. And tell Lieutenant Greenspan that 209 can return to quarters. Yes, sir. I'll tell my driver... No, you tell him that I'm up on the second floor at the Mammoth Metalworks. Yes, sir. I'll stand by until the salvage group... Chief Cody, I got a question. Order. Why you can't ask any questions till the chief gets through? Uh, with the permission of the chair. Uh, yes, sir. Before I finish, maybe we ought to clear up any questions. So if Whitey wants anything cleared up... Oh, well, yes, sir. Okay, Whitey. Only don't take all day. Uh, chief Cody... The way these sprinklers work, uh, there's a pipe that runs along the ceiling and it's full of water. And the sprinkler heads, they stick out of the pipe, right? Right. And uh, when there's a fire, the heat melts a little thing that keeps the water from running out of the sprinkler head, right? Right. And when that little thing melts, the sprinkler head sprays water on the fire. Only this time, there wasn't any fire. So there was something wrong with the sprinkler head. Oh, what could be wrong if you know so much? Well, listen, it's a metal shop, isn't it? And they use acids on metal sometimes, don't they? All right, what of it? Well, the acid, that makes fumes in the air. And the fumes get at the sprinkler head and they make it all looky. I mean, they can corrode it, can't they? So in this mammoth metal works, the sprinkler head maybe was corroded. It must have been. Oh, look, if you know so much about it... A good point, Mr. Chairman. Huh? You... You don't mean Whitey is right. Well, now, let me finish. Whitey might have been right, except for what happened next. Well, what happened next was you said Tim Collins put in a brand new sprinkler head. He did, and he turned on the water. And I went up to look over the situation. And ten minutes later... Private Collins, uh, let's hear your side of it. Yes, sir. Well, Chief, engine 209 rolled back to quarters. Lieutenant Greenspan reported us back in service. And before we had our turnout coats and boots stowed away... A second call came in from the same box. Oh, golly. Only this time, I bet you found the fire. No, sir. No fire. It was that sprinkler head, again. But, but it was a brand new sprinkler head. It couldn't get all corroded in just that short time. That's it, Whitey. Twice, inside half an hour, that sprinkler system went off without reason, drowning the machines in the mammoth metalworks. And the second time, you were right there yourself. I was there, and so was the salvage crew. Mopping up the water, helping to put the machines back in order. But well, didn't you see anything? I did not. How about you, Collins? Well, all I saw when we rolled to answer that second alarm was Chief Cody, madder than a wet hen and wetter than a wet hen, too. Yeah, well, <laughs> we, we don't have to go into that. Yes, sir. But boys and girls, there's my problem. There's what puzzled the whole fire department. What went wrong at 10 Patterson Street? Well, gee, can't the engine men figure it out? They all know about water and pressure and stuff. No, no, the laboratory. Listen, the laboratory, that's where they know all about the sprinklers, isn't it? Well, now the answer must be found. And, Whitey, you have the scientific slant, and, Jimmy, you know a lot about regular firefighting. Oh, yeah. So I wonder, could you two give us some time, maybe sit in on the investigation, help us figure it out, huh? Oh, well, gosh, help the department? Well, if, if we... If oh, you... boy, Whitey, what do you say? Oh, gosh, Jimmy, say yes, quick. Say yes for the both of us, huh? Well, then, that's that. 
All right, now, meet me tomorrow at headquarters, and when we get a solution, you can report it here at your next meeting of the Firefighters' Brigade, huh? Oh, boy! Meeting's adjourned! So Chief Cody, in his effort to save the Firefighters' Brigade at Northside School from breaking up over the rivalry between Whitey Williams and Jimmy, Tim Collins' younger brother, has introduced a note of mystery. Is it possible for Jimmy and Whitey to find a solution? Well, you'll find out when you hear our next true-to-life episode of The Firefighters. In just a moment, Chief Bob Cody will tell you, boys and girls, how you can help the firefighters in your own town. But first, here's a message you ought to hear. And now, Chief Bob Cody with a special notice for the Firefighters Brigade. Chief Cody. Hello, boys and girls. This is your friend, Chief Cody, with another common cause of fire to add to your list. Now, write these two words, oily material. That means anything that can hold grease or oil, waiting for a spark to set it aflame, or just waiting to catch fire by its own action. So remember that fire cause, oily material. And if there's any in your house, keep it in a metal container. Well, that's all for now. You'll be hearing from me soon. Fire Chief Cody and the young rookie fireman, Tim Collins, will be back on the same station the next time you hear... That's it. Let's roll! Let's go! Firefighters! Firefighters is a copyrighted feature of William F. Holland Productions.